Hi there, welcome. Welcome to Home Keepers. Come right on in, my friend. So glad to be here with you today. So glad you're there joining us. And I never want to forget that we'll have brand new viewers every day and want you to be part of us. Don't, don't let it just be a one-time thing here. And I'm very happy about this program today because my guests are people that are right down the hall from my office here at the Christian Television Network. Uh, their names are Robbie and Rob, Rob and Lori Evans, and uh, they have a story to tell that every Christian really needs to hear. I uh, I was one of the few that kind of knew what was going on. Really, everybody in the building uh, was not aware of what was going on. But let me say this: if cancer has ever touched you in any way, uh, raise your hand. I don't see any hands out there. It has touched all of us, but this story is one that everyone really needs to hear because there's so much to learn from it besides the cancer experience. And also, uh, perhaps you have seen these people, you will recognize them because they are the founders of uh, and the performers of Christian Fitness. Let's take a look at that. Live a healthy life. Is it, it is. That one piece. It's like a cow lick. There's a pound of fat. Oh, <laughs> gross. That is what a pound of fat looks like. There it goes again. I saw it. <laughs> I'm so they glad like reached out and tapped me on the shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> okay, hold your fat. <laughs> it's not mine. It's someone else's. I'm not claiming this. I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. <laughs> All right, I think you're going to see a side of them you've never seen on uh, Christian Fitness. Because if I, if I had a title for this program, it would be Turning Cancer into a Ministry. You've got to hear it. And uh, Lori has always cooked in a very healthy manner. But when Rob was diagnosed with cancer, I mean, this girl, she went for it. In fact, at one point, she was telling me how exhausting it was to cook as healthily as she did because so many things were from scratch. So uh, don't miss one minute of what they have to say. Before I join her, she's going to fix kind of a really simple but healthy, healthy salad. Uh, probably you can learn from and get some ideas of your own. I'll be with her in a second. But before I do, I want to offer you this awesome book called The Faith of America's Presidents. This author, Daniel Mount, has gone to the extreme work of putting together what the faith of our presidents was alike. And you would be surprised to know how many of them were devout believers and some less, some more, but that faith has had such an important part in the leadership of the United States of America. And I've got news for you. That's the reason God has prospered America as he has. And we need to get back to very, very committed faithful presidents and leaders, and it makes a world of difference. Your children will not learn this in history in school. I urge you to order it from us, and you can have it for that gift of at least $20 to the program. You can use your credit card or debit card by calling 1-800-229-0059 or uh, write to me at Box 6922 Clearwater, Florida, 33758, and we'll get it right out to you. And I have joined Lori over here. I've, I've said so many times on the show how I love colorful food. I do too. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, God made all of it, so mm -hmm. everything is colorful. But I'm doing a kind of a cheating version. This is what we do when we're at the office and we need to have some lunch, and it's quick. Mm -hmm. So if you do, um, like we do at home, do pan-seared salmon in the oven or in a pan, then get organic wild-cut salmon and cook it, but if you don't have that, just get some wild cut, wild salmon. I put it in a bowl. This is so simple, and it's so healthy because it's full of protein. The omegas are there. Salmon's one of the best things you can eat, yes. right? I, I love it. I usually order it when I go out. Yeah, yeah, I do too. Mm -hmm. I love salmon. And I kind of cheated today and did the avocado already done without anything in it. I don't because in she it. couldn't find any ripe ones. <gasps> yeah, yeah, well, oh, actually this one, I cut one in yeah, half. Yeah, it's still it. pretty hard, though. It is pretty They're, hard, but it... A couple of days, these are going to be perfect. Yeah, I mean, the key is I buy, like, 
five, six, ten, however many avocados, because we eat avocado every single day. So you know, I do too. And um, you've you've always been good at this. But when Robert was going through his thing, you were a fanatic. Uh, well, yeah, because you know, and and everybody's different when they go through. Um, trying to eat through cancer and they mm -hmm. tell you eat anything and all that but because of what we were walking through with Robert it, mm -hmm. we, he couldn't just and I and sugar you've heard me say it a million times sugar's evil don't eat it <laughs> so, so don't eat it but anyway I just took the salmon mixed up the avocado in it because I don't like to use mayonnaise oh how pretty mainly because mayonnaise has got raw eggs and if you're going through anything you really don't want to do raw eggs it so. really all of them have raw not eggs all of it? them but a lot of them do it's, oh, yeah, I didn't so, know that yeah so it's like okay not and well, then I just take a little bit of a lemon mm -hmm. and roll it mm -hmm. so that you know it's soft and I can it's get good some just of the like juice. that. Yeah, mm -hmm. it really is. And then I just do a little bit of lemon over it, just mm -hmm. a little bit of that. I like lemon on salad anyway, and it's pretty. And also uh, for him, because of the type of cancer, everything he had, you did a lot of meal replacements, which are shakes. Yes. Um, yeah, actually, it was interesting. The Lord really brought an, an amazing man in to our lives and his name's Guy Evans. He owns Bioactive Nutrients and he has a meal replacement that is absolutely a pure product. And when you're dealing with cancer, you really have to have pure. good, very pure. You don't want sugar, mm -hmm. you want junk. We trust him, we love him. He's part of the Christian Fitness um, show as well. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, I mean, we that, love uh, That avocado's almost there. It really, it's soft, it really is. And I, a lot of times will, you know, you just dress cube it up a little bit. bit. Or cut it that way. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of times I'll just cube it. Do you know it. something else? I think when food's attractive like this, it helps. My, my father died of cancer, and, and he moved to Florida 10 days before he died. And I, I was determined he was going to live, you know. Mm -hmm. And um, I would set the table with the best china and everything and make everything very appealing uh -huh. and actually put two or three pounds on him. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, it makes a difference. Don't it get really your plastic does. stuff out when people are sick, you know. Yeah, I mean. Dress it up. It's nice. I mean, this is That's beautiful. beautiful. This is a whole meal. This is just for one mm -hmm. person because really there's not a lot of calories yeah. in it. So. Yeah. Um, but anyway, that's, and we ate that yesterday at lunchtime mm -hmm. here. Oh, yeah. Her, so I watch is... her fix the lunches and <laughs> they, they're really, uh, I think they're quite innovative. I, I commend you. But the, surely you got this. But if not, uh, the recipes are yeah. free and um, email is the best way. That information is coming up on your screen because uh, we want you to meet uh, Robert. And I'm sure that as I talk to them, I'm going to learn things that I didn't know, although I've kind of been on the front row for it. So stay with us. If you would like a copy of today's recipe, you may receive it by contacting us through social media as listed on the screen. When requesting a copy through the mail, be sure to include a self-addressed stamped envelope. Thank you, and please know we always appreciate hearing from our viewers. Well, I have talked to Robert and Lori about this program for a long time, and I told them I wanted them to be on it, but... Um, he was found to have cancer, and they started chemo, and then the surgery, and then more chemo. And do you have radiation too? Yes. Mm -hmm. Radiation, and then more surgery. And um, so, didn't agree to come on till it was all done. Mm -hmm. And I think that was a good idea. So welcome. Thank you. And I would like to say also that you, you've been a real blessing to this network. These people uh, were in a television situation that if I mentioned the name, you would, you would. Uh, recognize immediately, have a lot of knowledge in uh, television, and uh, you've been a blessing. Thank you. It's been a blessing to be here. Yeah. We love it here. Now, uh, let's start where, um, how did you find out that you had, you had colon cancer, right? Mm -hmm. How colon did right. you find out you had that? Were you you're not feeling good, you're sick? I actually had symptoms, um, had some problems, some bleeding, some other things going mm -hmm. on. And, um, you know, they say at 50, you're supposed to go get checked. You're supposed to get a colonoscopy done mm -hmm. at 50. Well, I didn't. Mm -hmm. I was 50, waited a couple or 53. Yeah. So yeah. Is that lesson years. number one? Lesson yes. number one. <laughs> Gentlemen, if you're 50 years old, forget about even thinking about it, just go get it done. Yeah, because uh, men are big babies. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. We don't want to, you know, go to the doctor unless it's the last. No. 
no. last resort. Right. Uh, so anyway, um, I was having some issues, having some symptoms, and uh, decided to go. And finally, after much prodding from mm -hmm. my wife, you know, you really ought to go get that checked out. That's not normal. I said, all right. <laughs> so I went and had that done, and that's when we got the diagnosis. Can, can you remember when they gave you that C word? That, that's well, got to be just yeah. lightning. Well, here, and, and, you know, I'm sure we'll get into that more, but to have a godly wife is the most incredible thing, um, to walk through anything, any kind of mm -hmm. trial, you know, that, that marriage and, and just that relationship that you have with your, with your spouse. Um, because, you know, they knocked me out for the colonoscopy, so they came in and told her. You were the first one. So I'm still, I'm still groggy, don't know where I am, you uh -huh. know, out of it basically. And they mm -hmm. tell her, the doctor tells her. Um, so they just walk right in yeah. and just go, well, I don't have good news. He has colon cancer. And I just stared and went, no, no, mm -hmm. no. <laughs> and so she can't even talk to me because I'm still coming out of the yeah. anesthesia. Uh, so it wasn't really until yeah, it wasn't until the drive home, you know, because she has to drive me home. Um, and actually, it was about an hour drive, probably. Mm -hmm. um, so it wasn't until the drive home that she told me, and we started talking about it. And um, you know, the first thing we did was call some pastor friends of ours. They dropped everything they were doing and drove. It's probably an hour or more to come see us. Mm -hmm. And uh, they spent I don't know several the entire day. Yeah, the entire day just <laughs> just. They're Hanging not, out. Yeah, really which, just talking. All we did was talk about how, how wonderful God is, how great Jesus is. It just, mm -hmm. you know, it wasn't a pity party. It wasn't, um, you know, ministry. It wasn't prayer. Boy, it was that's just a, a time of just that's talk. unbelievable. It was fellowship. It was yeah. awesome. Yeah, you know, uh, several years ago when Michael J. Fox was diagnosed with Parkinson's, mm -hmm. and he's still alive. Yeah. Isn't it amazing? Mm -hmm. uh, I remember this. I can't quote it perfectly, but his wife said, we have Parkinson's, or she said, we have a problem. Yeah. And that's what I saw with you guys. Uh, there, there were like was no break. You, you were fighting together and you were praying together. And was there a moment when you thought, we're going to make a ministry out of this? No, I don't think so. No, I mean, because being in the ministry. Because yeah. I watched you. Yeah. 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 No, just, you know, God's going to get the glory. Mm -hmm. you know, for, for everything that we do mm -hmm. and everything that he does in our lives. So it was never, you know, we're going to write a book or we're going to do this, we're going to do that. And I mean, we do have a book offer today and this uh -huh. is it, of course. You know, we don't need to write a book. This <laughs> one's already awesome. been written. It's pretty good, you know, and this is what got us through. So, um, you know, no, I wouldn't say there wasn't, a, you know, that light bulb that went off. It's just, this is just another phase of the ministry. Well, that's kind of the way you live, but I watched you. Uh, you're not overweight or anything now, but I watched you lose weight and... You never lost all of your hair, but I was astounded that you continued to come into work. You, you didn't miss a whole lot of work through all of, how many months was this? It's about a 14 month mm -hmm. battle between all yeah, of Yeah, you didn't. That's when we actually started going to the doctors and everything else. I mean, we had other doctors, our own family doctors, the one that actually, kind of, and he's the one that witnessed me being healed from cancer and a rare muscle disease. So. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um, but he was the one that directed and just said, look, you guys take care of people every single day, so we want you to go get the best. Yeah, I wonder how many Christian cancer patients and what they go through mm -hmm. ever realize that they could really minister in those chemo wards. Oh, and, gosh. Because I know oh, that you goodness. reached out to the, yes. the workers yeah. Yes, as well absolutely. as the patients, and yes. you took faith right. Do you have any stories about that? Oh, my gosh, yeah, dozens, <laughs> of, <laughs> hundreds of them. I mean, how long is the show? <laughs> Maybe we could do a whole week. No, I mean, just time and time again, um, and especially a lot of times if I were going for radiation, they would leave her in the waiting room, so she had great opportunity to minister while she was out there. Um, but then all the nurses, I mean, just, just, you saw God intervene at every single episode. I mean, there was one time I went for radiation, and um, there was a new radiation tech there, and she played Christian music while I was in the radiation tube, and I came out and I was like, thank you so much for playing that music. Uh -huh. She said, I don't know if she knew who, you know, but anyway, she said, yeah, I just thought you might enjoy that. Uh, just little things like that, mm -hmm. um, but we ministered to nurses. Um, Lori's got a great story of one um, that we really almost formed a relation, you know, kind of formed a bond with. Um, well, and even a chemo patient that was getting radiation the same time, she started coming in the same time, mm -hmm. and we found out she was booking, getting her time in the morning every morning, and she knew he did. And so she, if he went in, she'd talk to me beforehand, and we would pray with her. We actually prayed with her with everything was over mm -hmm. and prayed with her husband. And I mean, it was just, you know, we at one point in the very beginning, because God gave me some real 
specific instructions how to handle it, what to do, mm -hmm. um, and he needed me really strong, and he told me that. He was very clear, please mm -hmm. be very strong, you know, don't be a crybaby. Mm -hmm. So, um, and in all of that, we realized that people were seeing us differently, but we purposed, and, yeah. and I say it this way on purpose, we purposed in our hearts every day to look for the goodness of right. God. No matter what, because you know, when, when someone goes through cancer, and we've been through this before, and even the Lord told me, woke me up one morning really early, and He said, Lori, you've been through this before, I was with you then, and you're going to go through this now, and mm -hmm. I'm with you now. So when the Lord, and that was just one instruction, when He does that, then you know He's with you. I mean, everything in the Word, He's, I'll never leave you, forsake you. We're more than conquerors. I mean, everything that you continue to declare over your life every day, but we purposed every day mm -hmm. yeah. we would see the goodness of God. No matter what was said, no matter what doctors said this or that or wow. some Boy, person or anything else, I mean, you you can focus on, and part of that was because I had gone through cancer and all the, that was something that became a real revelation for me, mm -hmm. was that before I got healed, my focus was on my sickness and all the doctors and everything else. And it's there, it's, it's evident it's there, but when you focus on the goodness of God in every mm -hmm. day, for, and that was how we started it. Do you know what I'm hoping? Because we got a lot of great people of faith watching and some of them are going through this. Sure. I hope that what you've said gives them a, a, just tweaks a lot of attitude, the way you look at it, that you can walk into mm -hmm. these places. I would think that a nurse working in chemo, a doctor and all these things, there's everything there to keep you down. Yes. Yeah. And that next time you go for radiation or whatever, just just think encouragement. Yeah. Okay, I want, I want yeah. to encourage people today. Yeah. I want to encourage the one receiving it. I want to encourage the one giving it. And his kingdom flourishes in those yeah. situations. Well, and when you pour out the love of God on people, God fills you back yeah. up. Exactly. So, and, and that's what we experienced. Like this nurse that actually wanted to be his nurse every time he went in for his... Oh, I can second. understand yeah, why. She always told us, she said, make sure when you guys come in, request me. <laughs> and we would sit there and, you know, we would do our Bible study while we're sitting there waiting. Mm -hmm. She would stop in and we would talk with her and pray with her. And in one instance, I guess... Um, it was one of our last treatments, or one of my last treatments. I say ours, but like as you said yeah. earlier, anyway. Yeah, you're right. Um, it was one of our last treatments, and Lori's hugging her and telling her, you know, it's going to be okay. She, we were ministering she to was her going about through, she was going through some family things. Yeah. And, and Lori yeah. said, you know, it's really, it's going to be okay, and hugging her. And we walked out and realized, oh my gosh, we're in there getting chemotherapy, mm -hmm. yet we're telling the nurse everything's going to yeah. be fine. So uh -huh. we're ministering. So it's just kind of an interesting situation. But as Lori mentioned, always looking for the goodness of mm -hmm. God. And no oh, matter goodness. what it was, on the morning drives in, you know, there would be, the, the Lord would always showed up. And we don't look for signs and things, but no. there were always signs and things <laughs> that did happen, you know, whether it was sunrises. Little, yeah, the sun Beautiful just coming through sunrises. a little hole in the clouds. Or um, a lot of times we would see bumper stickers on car that said faith, that said believe, that said, you know, I love Jesus. Just little things like that that you would see and say, wow, mm -hmm. wow, you know, just because you're going to find what you look for. If you want to look, you know, you find people that are extremely critical mm -hmm. of everything. Yeah, of course you're going to find it. You're going to find mm -hmm. it's not that hard to find faults. Uh, but when you want to look for the goodness of God, you're going to find it because he, he shows up all the time. It's just whether are you looking for it. Yeah. And that's what we purposed every day. We're going to look for the goodness of God. Well, watching you as long as you've been here. How long have you been here? About 10 years. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the uh, you have a real work ethic. There, there's no question. And I'm wondering, because one day Stephanie and I. <laughs> They know Stephanie. We said, "What's he doing here?" <laughs> <laughs> they asked me that. You guys, asked I know me that you said times. his feet were hurting so badly, and I thought, oh, "Go home, please, please go home and rest." Yeah, well, okay, my question is, uh, was the work ethic? That I know, I know, I've got one myself. So yeah. was that just your nat your nature, or was there something? that was driving you that said, Lord, I'm not going to, I'm not going to let this get me down. I am going to go to work. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I'm, I, that was the thing is, I mean, I wanted to slap the devil every chance I could get. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to do that by <laughs> just saying, you know what? I'm not going to be pitiful. I'm not going to stay home. I'm not going to succumb to these, to these symptoms. You know, I'm going to be more than a conqueror, which mm -hmm. is, okay, you conquer, but how do you be more? How can you be more than that? More than go above and beyond. Right. Mm -hmm. So yeah, any chance that I could get to kick the devil in the teeth, you know, I'm going to, mm -hmm. um, 
So yeah, I would come to work. I would you know work late. I would work from home. I would you know yeah. go to church, do do everything that I could do physically. I mean, there were times that you know we had to scale it back a little, mm -hmm. or I had to stay home. And Not much but, though. Yeah, I mean, because why? Why? And I, I want I want to repeat well. what I said at the top. You were diagnosed. Then they started you on chemo. And radiation was the and first radiation. Phase, right? And then surgery. surgery. Mm -hmm. And then more chemo. Right. Mm -hmm. And another then surgery. more surgery. Then another surgery. And that's. Uh, that's what I was waiting for, you know, to get you because you look absolutely wonderful. Yeah, I feel he, great. He worked out during the chemo when he could, uh, except for in between the surgeries, he would work out. And that was one of one of his doctors. She said, look, if you want to work out, you're an athlete. I mean, his heart rate is like a marathoner. You know, he's in such good shape. So he would work out and she would periodically tell him, you know, work out, work out hard. We walked Oh my goodness, some nights we'd walk. <laughs> I think one night we so walked. They advised you to work out hard? Oh, yeah. They did him uh -huh. because he well, was in such yeah. good shape. Yeah. And that's the one thing we found that if you're active, like one night we walked twice or three times mm -hmm. because he felt so bad. He said, let's just go for a walk. So we'd go out and go walking. But that was the key is being active really being active. Yeah, I want to take a minute for you to tell us how you cooked because she would talk to me about it. and. Mm -hmm. And you've heard cooking from scratch. This was from far deeper than scratch, what you were doing. It had to be because, I mean, with what they did, he wore a temporary ileostomy bag. That's different than a colostomy bag. It's temporary. They're going to, they remove part of the colon, part of the area, and then they close up your lower intestines. So he he came, actually we shot two shows and he was wearing <laughs> we shot a Christian fitness up here in the head the bag, which <laughs> But a lot of athletes to try do. To see if you can guess what show it is. I mean, <laughs> there are athletes that, that do But there are that. certain things he, because of cold that he could, eat. could not have. He could right. not have. So Absolutely. we had to change everything. No nuts, you know, the, the way meat was, um, the way eggs were. He couldn't have certain types of fiber. So it was recreating after all the years of eating healthy and all mm -hmm. these things and that's the thing we've mm -hmm. always done everything mm -hmm. so it's not so much that we did something wrong it's more you know the devil's a liar whatever mm -hmm. and you just move on but yeah it w there were times and I remember telling you I that, remember telling you, yeah, you were just went, exhausted from cooking and then I had to say oh gosh Lord I'm sorry I'm not going to complain because I realized mm -hmm. I was tired but it was getting creative like cooking acorn squash mm -hmm. and finding a way that I could do meats in it and, and oh, she got very creative. Meals. I would eat small meals throughout the day. You know, you couldn't That's, eat large meals. So mm -hmm. you're eating six or eight meals a day. So you know, imagine trying to Hey every once in a while I was like, like Okay, I'm hungry. You know, was he just eating that <laughs> every five hour minutes? minutes. <laughs> <laughs> but it was fine. I mean Yeah. Uh, in the in the time we have left, uh, could you kind of sum up what Robert was then and what he is now, and I'm not just talking physically. Right. Well, the physical part, I mean, that's, we all go through things, you know, and, and actually we're all going to pass away one day. Um, really, and what I got through the whole, this whole thing is how much God loves me. I mean, I knew that I loved him before, you know, mm -hmm. as a Christian. I knew that I loved the Lord, and, you know, I've dedicated everything in my life to him uh, and to reaching others and having them mm -hmm. be impacted by the gospel. But through this, I really understood how much he loves us. I mean, it, and that's why I say the little signs and things just constantly, you know, you, when you don't feel good, when those things are going on, I would get texts from a pastor or I would get a phone call from a pastor or someone would say, hey, I was praying for you at so-and-so time. I'm like, yeah, that's because I was, you know, not feeling while I was doing this yeah. or that. Um, and just constantly, and you know, he uses people. So it was constantly getting texts and messages and people praying. Mm -hmm. And um, one of the important things we did um, was, and we heard someone say this, was only talk to people that touch heaven. So we didn't go public. There are a lot of people that didn't. Mm -hmm. We didn't go on Facebook right. and tell everybody about it. And, and that's just what we chose to do. People, you know, whatever mm -hmm. works for them. Uh, but we chose to do that, and we only entrusted it to people that knew that were going to stand in faith with us, that, that, that believed in healing, that knew the Lord was going to touch my body and heal me. Um, so anyway, so we looked for those things. But now I just had this revelation of how much God truly loves, not just me, there's no respect for persons, but He loves all of us so much, and He wants nothing but the best for us. He wants us He wants us to be above and beyond, you know, mm -hmm. the head and not the tail. And... and uh, just well, because you meet God in those circumstances in a way you'll never meet him in any other kind of circumstance. You know what I hope they get today? You've thrown out a lot of good things. 
but to always look for the goodness of God, that's good for me. I'm going to remember that. I might have to put a post-it note on <laughs> or something, <laughs> but to make sure that that is, uh, that is your goal in the morning. We are just about out of time, but I've uh, been talking to them about this program for a long time because I know that uh, probably everyone watching right now you know, has a little understanding of cancer, but this is the way you can go through it triumphantly. Hey, stay with me. I have a couple things to say before we have to say goodbye. Artheline would like you to keep the following information handy. You may contact Homekeepers by writing to Homekeepers, P.O. Box 6922, Clearwater, Florida, 33758, or go to www.rippy.org. Remember, we always enjoy hearing from our viewers, and we thank you for your support. Just want to remind you of the book that we offered you at the top of the program about the faith of America's presidents and the importance it is uh, when a nation acknowledges God, they always do so much better in every way. Hope you'll order it. You know, I just want you to know that Rob and Lori and I believe in divine healing and that miracles are indeed for today, which might pose the question, why didn't that happen with these people with such strong faith? third chapter of Daniel outlines the story of King Nebuchadnezzar threatening a fiery furnace death for Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego unless they worshiped one of his gods and bowed down before a golden image. I love the response of these devout young men. They basically said, go ahead and stoke up the furnace, king. We know our God is able to deliver us, but if he does not, will still not bow. Boy, I've been sitting on the front row of Christianity all of my life and would have to admit that my favorite type of Christian is the but if not category. The but if not Christian is unmovable, unshakable, no matter what. The Apostle Paul wrote about being more than a conqueror. How in the world does that make sense? Isn't conquering the goal I believe the person who is more than a conqueror is the one still standing when the conquest is over. Andre Crouch put it this way, I thank God for the mountains and I thank him for the valleys and I thank him for the storms he's brought me through. For if I never had a problem, I wouldn't know that he could solve them. I'd never know what faith in God could do. Through it all, I've learned to trust in Jesus. I've learned to trust in God. Through it all, I've learned to depend on his word. Think about it. And please remember, friend, there's no higher calling than that of a homekeeper. God bless you. If you should miss a homekeeper's program, you can catch up by going to www.ctnonline.com. Click on CTN Programs and then on Homekeepers.